All right, welcome to Crush Nation Team Call. It is February 24th and we have such an incredible guest speaker tonight. I am so excited, Nicole, for you to pour into this team. Um, typically what we do before we get started, if you're cool with this, we're gonna just do really quick recognition of the amazing leaders that have advanced their business in the last week. So I'm gonna open it up really quickly for recognition before we hand it over to our guest, Nicole. Who wants to go first? Oh, I, I have recognition. Um, I wanted to give a big shout out to Deborah Capaccio for reaching three percent And I wanted to say congratulations and thank you so much, Deborah, for showing us how to dream big, be bold, and have grit. Whenever I read your post, Deborah, I, this is how I feel, and I'm sure anyone who sees your post on social media feels the same way. I feel like you get me. I feel like you'd be cheering me on, and I just love all of your posts. So way to go, Deborah. That's awesome. Does anyone else have anybody they want to shout out? I want to shout out my coach, new coach, Tanya. Um, she's on, just finished day two of the training, had an amazing transformation with our programs and the workouts, and she's already at SC4 and will officially be an Emerald coach this Thursday. She probably doesn't even have an idea of what that all means, but she's just following the training, getting it done, Emerald in 24 hours. She's doing amazing. I'm so happy for her. That's awesome. Anyone else? All right, I will go. I have two announcements for tonight. Um, I have the first one I want to shout out Denise Lloyd for officially hitting Diamond. Ah! Like, I just want to shout from the rooftop. So, Denise, I honestly, I could not be more proud. I'm so excited for you. I know how hard you have worked at this, I know the grit that you pour in, the passion to your business. Um, to Soul Sister Nation, co-founder, and I am so, 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 so excited for you. This is just the beginning um, of your business scene where you have actually already up-leveled as you're in, in this advancement. It's been incredible. So congratulations, Denise. You did it, and I'm super excited for you, um, which also means you have earned um, lots of awesome things, including being able to walk across that stage at Summit, being recognized for your efforts, which is going to be phenomenal. Um, I also want to shout out Carissa Plu, oh. who is just honestly blown me away in the last few months. She's gotten laser, laser focused on her vision, on her mission, on really stepping into the leader she wants to be, where she wants to go, and she just absolutely sees it. So Carissa, congratulations for becoming a diamond coach. You did it a year ago, guys. I remember Carissa when she started with me a year ago, she's like, I will be diamond by this date. And you know, she had a little bit of a, honestly, Carissa had a, a, a tough summer um, with some health stuff going on with, with people in her family. And she's just been able to lean right back into where she wants to go and grow. And I'm so excited watching what you've done in the last three months, Carissa, is completely inspiring. And I just know where you wanna go and take this. And it is absolutely admirable. And you are such a leader on this team and we are so proud of you. So congratulations. Um, and does anybody else have anything they want to add for recognition before we pass this over and I introduce Nicole? Yes, I want to jump in. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're great. Oh, good. It's working. Okay. So um, I want to recognize Vanessa Perry. She is just this incredible human being. And when I first really got a grip on what this this business meant and the opportunities, she was one of the first, she actually was the first person to pop in my mind for who I wanted to work with because she has a fire in her belly and the biggest heart. And Vanessa, I absolutely adore you. I love working with you. I'm excited to work with you again. We used to teach together. Um, and I'm just so grateful and excited to have such an incredible person. So that's, thank you. And uh, you're amazing, Vanessa. That's I have one super quick. I want to welcome Cassie to the Uplift Tribe. She's our newest coach. And this is our amazing overarching team, Crush Nation. So welcome to the team. Welcome. All right. Thank you guys so much. Recognition is super important. So really, really proud of everybody. And tonight I'm really thrilled to be able to 
introduce Nicole. Nicole and I were able to speak together at an event um, that last month, and it was just really neat. I was sitting there watching Nicole, feeling her energy, watching how she commanded the room and the audience and how she shared her story um, and her expertise and her experience. And I literally grabbed her after her presentation. And I was like, you have to speak for our team. You are amazing. And so I just want to give, kind of give you guys a, a quick background on Nicole. So Nicole's a business strategist. She helps corporations, brands, partnerships, entrepreneurs, individuals clarify their vision, their mission, their values and objectives and then be able to create those uh, accountable action plans to achieve them. She's been doing this for 30 years in the world of big business, but her true passion is working with startups, entrepreneurs, and people committed to wanting more because that is where grit, determination, and desire to thrive, not just survive, burns, uh, burns. When we get our hands dirty and we make things happen. So it is Crush Nation and I love that. And that's Nicole said, it sounds like Crush Nation to me. Um, so we are going to kick this off. Nicole, you should be able to share your screen. Um, if not, I can share that for you, but you should be able to square, share your screen. You can see that option. Oh. And so what do I need to do to make this even better for everybody? There we go. Is that better? You're can doing you it. I can see you and I can see your screen. Oh, but you don't really want to. Oh, I didn't know I could do this. Yes. Oh, wow. So I, you know, you learn something new every day. So I will, uh, that's good. You know, I could just, I didn't think I could do this. Here we go. So what I have also done is um, I have given all of you a copy of my presentation. So if you go to um, my website, because I didn't know, I, I have to be honest, I don't do a lot via Zoom calls. Uh, so if you go to my website, nicolegalucci.com, and you go to tools and templates, you can actually also download this presentation. So the reason that I also did that for you is because when I do these presentations, uh, so I do lots of workshops, uh, there's also worksheets in here. So you're welcome to use them as you see fit as I take you through this. So maybe what I'll do, if it's okay with you, Kim, is it okay if I just start right in? Okay, perfect. So uh, hopefully, so Kim, you direct me if I go sideways or you guys can't see anything. So you, you, you be my monitor. You can't go so, sideways. Just talk. You're amazing. Okay, I'll do that. I'll do that. <laughs> so uh, everybody, as Kim was sharing, I've got 30 plus years of experience. So I put lots of makeup on before I actually got on this because I, um, I'm trying to hide all the, um, all, the, all the wrinkles and the gray hair. So I'm trying to do a good job. Uh, but uh, I literally has, I started out in strategy. I managed, uh, I started out at Nestle right after university and in product management. And then I managed a joint venture between Nestle and Coke. And then I went on to co-found an agency. And then after that, uh, traveled for a bit, co-founded another agency. And my children were very much of the opinion that I was founding these agencies for holy companies. And they were like, you need to go do this on your own. And so about a year ago, I started out on my own and I do a ton of strategy for big corporations, brands, uh, startups, and entrepreneurs. And as a result, I've actually morphed into doing it a lot for individuals. So uh, a passion that I have is I teach graduate students at George Brown and at Rotman and Schulich. And as part of what I do there, I actually take them through a strategic process. So specific to uh, my presentation where I met Kim, obviously the crazy Kim, with all this energy, I took actually everybody there through the bigger presentation. I'm gonna focus today with you guys specifically on the goals, but I thought I'll share a little bit of how I got to this part and how I actually started to create this process because you know, life has twists and turns and it's through the twists and turns that you adjust, very similar to what all of you are doing. So I'll take you through the first slide. You know, this is what I expected life to be and this is what all of us expect life to be. You know, when you're alive, there's a series of adrenaline that keeps all of our hearts pumping and God knows that's what all of us want. And admittedly, as I was going through life, this is what I expected. So my expectation was there was gonna be this positive trajectory straight up and I was going to light the world on fire. Uh, so this was, you know, you're, you're young, you're in your 20s, and this is the trajectory for life. 
And uh, so I am very much an adrenaline junkie and like to do lots of different things. And I have to be honest with you, I was very much on this path. And then I kind of got hit by a Mack truck. Um, so, you know, all of us have had a proverbial experience. Mine is the proverbial Mack truck and I make just of it here. But in fairness, I had a major uh, life challenge and as a result of that I was not where I wanted to be and now my entire trajectory was literally put at risk and so I was trying to figure out what exactly am I going to do and how am I going to adjust so this is where you know you rely on all of your training and I don't know if any of you have ever heard of this expression but the truth is we default to our highest level of training so thanks to my training at Nestle and at Coke, I had a very strong strategic foundation that was provided to me that allowed me to build business models and build brands. And so part of me was, well, if I'd done this for brands, could I actually retrofit this entire process and apply it to life? Because now I had, I was a single mom now with three young children at the time, they were nine, 11 and 14. I had just started uh, venturing into the agency world and had just been offered the opportunity to become a partner. And it was like, holy shit, lots of opportunity, but at the same time, lots of challenges, lots of financial concerns, et cetera. So for me, really establishing where I was going to go and how I was going to do this was fundamental to making sure I could put one foot in front of the other every single day and provide the life for my children that I really wanted to provide. So that was fundamental to me. I um, very selfishly had three children. I really wanted to have kids. I wanted to have a whole army. Um, my body and my mind only allowed me to have three. Uh, and some days I want to give one of them back. Some days I want to give three of them back. I'm uh, just kidding. But, um, but net net, I wanted to ensure that I could provide for them the life that I had envisioned. And so I re-engineered this process and I'm going to take, take you through the top line of it, but today we're really going to focus on goals. But I think this slide sort of encapsulates the whole thing. And interestingly, as I sit here, I've got my vision boards behind me. I think you guys can see them. And I should share, you know, I say vision boards because everything truly does start with a vision. You have to have that idea of where you're going and there's these big, hairy, audacious goals. Otherwise, there's nothing that's going to inspire you to get there. And I have two vision boards, and so why do I have two? I have one that is for the imminent future, so very much for 2020 and 2021, because there is a focus, obviously, to get done what we need to get done in order to build for the grander future. And then my other one is for the next 10 years. So I'm always looking 10 years out, but at the same time, there are things that we need to do, obviously, stepping stones to achieve that 10-year plan. And so I have a combination of both so that I'm inspired each and every day to deliver on that. And in fairness, so I'm, I'm in my home office as I'm chatting with all of you, but these actually sit so that when I wake up in the morning, they're one of the very first things that I see. So vision for me is extremely important. The next step is obviously understanding your mission. And truthfully, I, I have an exercise that I do with everyone who comes to my workshop. And uh, you guys are welcome to take a look at this uh, online and actually research it. So finding your purpose is really tough. And it takes, uh, it actually takes us to sort of step away and go through a, a quite a detailed process as to what inspires us, what are we really good at, what could we actually do that would allow us to create a sustainable living, et cetera. So I have kind of re-engineered a process called Ikigai. So I don't know if any of you have heard about this. There have been books written on it, but it actually started, you know, there's these five blue zones around the world where people live very happily and healthily. And the top one is in Okinawa, Japan, and that's where this actually comes from. And believe it or not, 30% of the population is over the age of 80, and they're still going to work every day because they lead very productive and communal lives. So they connect with each other, and they support each other, and at the same time, they're constantly inspired to contribute every day. 
So based on a model that they've created, there's a way that you can actually look at your values and what sustains you and inspires you and what is also something that the world requires and find the convergence of those to really hone in on your mission and hopefully find something that is sustainable and allows you to create an amazing opportunity for you to earn an income as well and support that passion. So that's the next stage. Obviously, your values, in my mind, are fundamental. They're your foundation. And values are what ground us. They help us when we are at a fork in the road and we're deciding, do we want to go left or do we want to go right? And legitimately, they cause us to sort of take that breath and does this fit not only with where we're going with our vision, but with who we are fundamentally. And I think that's very something that is very soul searching within our bodies. And if we listen to our bodies, truly our bodies can drive our values. Um, I like to do an exercise and everybody kind of cringes when I say this, but it's a very, very powerful exercise. And what I propose to people, and when you come to my workshops, I actually do this with you, but that you literally put yourself on a timer and for 20 minutes, you actually block out the rest of the world. You have complete silence and you write your eulogy, which sounds extremely morbid. And I apologize for that on this lovely Monday that feels like a spring day. Uh, but the reason that I'm sharing is because when you actually force yourself to do that exercise and you give yourself the time limit, what matters to you automatically comes to the surface. So this is what people would say about you and how you want to be remembered. And, you know, borrowing from Kim, uh, it's funny, I, my whole expression for everything that I do is to live your legacy. So I, I think Kim and I were meant to meet as a result of her whole commitment to legacy. And I'm hoping that for this, I'll maybe garner a headband somehow but um so I, I joined your team actually yesterday so uh somehow i'll have to earn that and i'll get a legacy headband um but i think the um when you write your eulogy it really forces you to realize what's important to you and in the process of taking your vision and what's important to you and marrying the two together it then really helps you define your goals and so goals are something that we're going to talk about, but I'm going to come back to that in a second. And then with your goals all laid out, obviously the fundamental piece for goals is really laying out an action plan. Because while we can have a vision, we know, you know what our purpose is, we can have values that are very important and ground us, but accompanying our goals has to be an action plan or we're honestly not going to get anywhere. And so I know you guys are all very goal driven as I sit here and I listen to you talking about the different structures and the different heights that you're reaching and the way that you guys all, you know, pay each other such honor and gratitude. And it's literally honing down to what are you doing today, tomorrow, this month, this quarter, this year, next year, leading up to the 10 years so that you actually achieve every single one of those goals. So it's, it's fundamental that we actually detail it to that level. And everybody says to me, oh my gosh, that is so much work. But the truth is you do it once and you set the foundation once. And once that is in place, all you are really doing is maintaining it. And in the process of maintaining it, you actually start to honestly move things off your list faster and faster and you actually find that you're achieving your goals sooner than you even expected because you're so organized and have such a strong protocol that doesn't mean that you don't fall off the the radar at times or fall off the proverbial wagon but you do definitely start to see the patterns and you start to see the benefits of staying on track and so as a result you know you just constantly keep that momentum going so we're going to talk a little bit more specifically in that area today. I know you guys have done vision boards and you've probably done some work on mission and values, but objectives are really where the rubber meets the road in fairness. So, uh, you know, let's, let's get into the presentation and let's really get into goal setting and my suggestion on how to do that, keeping in mind that I've been doing this now for a few years, obviously, with companies and helping them achieve their different goals and then obviously with individuals. But the key for me is really putting together this plan. So, you know, when you think about it, at the end of the day, we can all identify these goals, but the crux of it is why they actually matter. And, you know, we can say, I want to own this, or I want to lose this much weight, or I want to earn this much money. 
but it's that inspiration and the catalyst that is the, the glue to keep us on track. And so there's lots of different reasons that we do this, but fundamentally it comes down to we like to achieve. We like to know that we're putting one foot in front of the other every single day. It's inspiring. Not only are we inspiring to ourselves, but we're inspiring to those around us. It creates connection. I mean, look at all of you. All of you are actually connected by virtue of having common goals and a common community and a common language that inspires you to come together daily, weekly, monthly. You guys are constantly chatting. I, I fall Kim, obviously on Instagram, so I know how you guys are actually a bunch of crazy lunatics led by Kim. Um, and it's so inspiring. This is your community and tribe. And so this is, you know, what gets you up every single day to keep putting one foot in front of the other. But at the end of the day, the reason that we have goals is because we want more. Like fundamentally, we could just be, and all of you, it's Monday night. You could be downstairs watching The Bachelor um, or you're here. And it's, we want more for our lives. We want to experience more. We want a better tomorrow. And honestly, we want to leave this amazing legacy. That's the net net of it all. So in terms of some key funda fundamentals, what are key factors for success? Number one is obviously you need to list them. And so within this presentation, if you guys have downloaded it, I've actually laid out a chart that allows you to list them. And my suggestion is that you literally list them ad nauseum. Just, you just go for it. You also have to understand why they matter to you. You need to understand what you need to do to achieve them. And you need to then map them out and then make them happen. So we're kind of going to go through this together. I said to you earlier you know, that it's important that you think about your values and that you write your eulogy. There's, you know, a, a double-edged sword to this and incremental benefits that we sometimes don't realize. When I go through this in my workshop, everything starts to come together and you see the holistic benefits. But the truth is when you lay out that eulogy, you start to see the goals that really matter and you start to see, am I actually spending my days moving in that direction? with the grace and honor that is actually going to deliver the goals that I'm laying for myself. And so I think it's understanding that inspiration and those things that really matter that are fundamental to ensuring that we deliver on our goals and actually achieve them. So I think it's, it's while it's very important that you just list them all out, it's very important to understand the motivations. So I've given you some cues here. There's a whole bunch of different things that are important to all of us. And so absolutely without judgment, a suggestion that I have for all of you is I have some, I have a worksheet in here. So it actually looks like this. And my suggestion is that you go whole hog. I've given you a couple of pages, but you literally list them ad nauseum. Don't hold back. Don't judge yourself. Just knock it out of the park. List everything you can think of. And if you need 10 pages, then write 10 pages. And my suggestion would be that as you actually do this, you put a check mark. So don't go crazy here on trying to figure everything out. Just literally write out every single goal and put a check mark in the year that you would like to accomplish that goal. And so think about the parameters that I've laid here. So spiritual, health, personal goals, family goals, relationships, money, you know, travel, whatever is important to you, just list them all out because it's just getting it all out without judgment that is fundamental. And then what I want you to do is after you've gone through and you've now laid out, okay, what year do I actually think this is gonna happen? I want you to take a step back and literally I want you to go downstairs, either get that glass of wine or refresh your water or have whatever Ken says we're all allowed to eat now that I'm part of this. Um, and take a little bit of a break and then come back and lay them all out on the table. So if this is one page or five pages, lay them all out side by side so that you can see all of them. And then you have to do the hard work here. And this is where you have to pick the top five that matter to you the most. You have to start to prioritize. And you're going to see that there's clusters of things that come together and things that you could combine. And that's great. 
So you, this is where you actually start to organize things so that you are seeing, okay, well, you know, I've got some that say I need to focus on my relationship or my relationships in general. So that could be as a parent, as a partner, as a sibling, as a, you know, as offspring, whatever it is. And so how are you actually going to conquer that? You might conquer that as one big bulk, or you may conquer that in pieces because in some cases you could have huge strengths and in some cases you have areas that you want to work on. So you start to lay that out, but I want you to net out literally at the top five because those are the ones that are going to be the ones that legitimately you are going to focus on in the next year as a priority. You're going to achieve those ones that are out to 2030 without a doubt because you've identified them. But taking hold of those first five will be very important training to ensure that you actually achieve all that are on here. And obviously the hope is to achieve all of them. So as you do that, what I'd like you to do is leave all of that, look at those top five, and again, take a breath, make sure that you feel comfortable with them. And then I want you to come to terms with why you can't achieve them. So what is holding you back? Because this is where we can legitimately sit here and you and I know we can take that top five and we can map it out. But then what's going to happen is you're going to say, mm, do I really have enough time? Do I have enough money? I'm too old for this, which is often what I say. Um, I'm too young for this. Uh, I'm too tired. It's not working. You know, I, everybody says it's only going to take two minutes. It's going to take more than two minutes. Um, I'm going to start it tomorrow. Uh, we start every proverbial diet on Monday. You know, I can't do it. I'm afraid. All of those things. These are the things that totally crush our goals and ambitions, and we all have them. And my point to all of you is that those you need to come to terms with because you have to achieve those five and you have to achieve those 50 or those hundred. So my suggestion is that you actually write them out. So you take your top fears and your top distractions and you figure out now how you are going to manage them. Because if you don't have enough time, then maybe there are some things you could delegate. Maybe there is a spouse or a partner or a child who could help support. So while uh, you might cook dinner, maybe they're going to do the dishes and that's going to buy you some time. So it forces you to actually come to terms with your excuses. And I hate to say this, but it also forces us to realize that some of our excuses are bullshit excuses. So some of them are real and some of them are tangible. And so we can rely on other people to help make our goals happen. And some of them are just things that we have in our head and their noise and their cluster and chaos. And we need to put them on the table so that we can clear those and make things happen because we use these as excuses all the time. The other thing that I'm going to say to you is that at the end of the day, you are still, in spite of the fact that we are going to do this and we are going to commit, you're still going to fall off the wagon. And so the days that you fall off the wagon, you have to do this. You have to go, I fell off the wagon today. I'm going to let it go. And now I'm going to move on. I'm going to be back on the wagon. So I fell off the wagon on that one thing, but it doesn't mean I have to stay off the wagon. It doesn't mean that this is going to be something that is now going to destroy all the plans that I have in front of me. If you miss one day of working out, that's fine. Get, you know, work out later in the day or work out the next day. It's not the end of the world. So I think often what so many of us do is, you know, we miss Tuesday's workout. So we say, okay, well, I'll start again next, next Monday. Well, no, start Wednesday, you know? So whatever it is, we can get back on the horse pretty quickly. It's pretty much up to us. And I think this is where what you guys have is so amazing because you have this whole community that helps keep you accountable. And, you know, part of accountability is actually putting it out there. So one amazing opportunity that you have is to share some of your goals. And in sharing your goals, it sort of forces the other people in your tribe to say, hey, you committed this to yourself. You made this vow to yourself. You know, if we made these vows to another person, and think about that. Think about the most important person in your life. If you made a promise to them, Chances of you letting them down is slim to none without very, very strong rationale and you would probably feel terrible and you'd have a million reasons why you want to get around that. When, so I want you to think about that and, and look at your goals as your vow to yourself and think of yourself as that very important person that you love so much and keep that commitment to yourself because that's the only way you're actually going to stay on track. So once we 
commit to the vow and we deal with all of these crazy fears and distractions, what I want you to do is go back to that top five. And I actually want you to take the time to go through this. So the top five are usually the things that really get you going and are what your heart desires more than anything else. And so identify that. Identify what your motivation is to achieve that goal. So as an example, um, I do have a motivation to lose some weight uh, because I feel really healthy at a certain weight. And I do have a motivation to be in a certain health state. But what inspires me to do that is I want to be a very young grandmother. Now you need to know I have a 23 year old, a 25 year old and a 28 year old. And if they heard me right now say this, they'd be mortified because none of them are married. None they're Well, I have a couple that are in serious relationships, but at no point do they want to have children right now. And I'm tormented by the fact that I hope they, they just eventually give me grandchildren. But that aside, I want to be able to be rough and tumble with my grandchildren. I want to be able to canoe with them and, go swimming with them and play baseball and build forts in my family room. So fundamental for me and the key motivation for me to be physically fit and healthy is so that I can stay young as my children grow up and have their children. So I think it's, I'm sharing that with you to make the point that it's so important that you understand what your motivations are, because if your motivation is simply just to lose weight there has to be or to simply do x or y or to have that car you need to know that incremental ego factor or that incremental part of your story that is okay to have with or without judgment like don't judge yourself it doesn't matter you just need to know what that piece is so that you're inspired to stay on track and achieve the goal Obviously, next to that is when do you actually want to achieve it? You know, every smart objective in business as well as in life has a timeline. And so it's important that we put those timelines in place because my suggestion to all of you is once you actually commit to the timeline that you actually write it in your calendar. And I am old school. I keep a day timer. Um, so I keep it with me wherever I go. And I commit to weekly. So I have daily, weekly, and monthly initiatives that I have on top of quarterly, annual, and then obviously I go out 10 years. So for me, that is fundamental. And I would say that has been uh, fundamental to me achieving goals as a single mom in terms of our life and what I wanted to provide for my kids. And when you look at the top 1%, you know, they're always talking about well, what does the top 1% of the population do to be successful? They do what everybody else doesn't do. And it's, and it is hard work and it does mean we have to put in the extra and I'm not going to kid you. I fall off the wagon, but at the end of the day, the hope is that I will stay on the wagon more days than I won't. And so you'll achieve those goals step by step by step every day. The next part of this is actually, you know, defining what tools do you need? Do you have to get incremental resources? So in your case, do you need to join a tribe and have a team so that you stay connected? You know, do you have to get an extra job? Do you have to, I don't know, do all these other things in order to achieve your goal, do you have to have specific tools or resources at your fingertips? And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. And so if you do, and that is fundamental, then go and get them because then that you cannot use that as an excuse or a limiting belief. That is critical. And then next is obviously, okay, what are the steps? What are the steps that you need to do to make this happen? And this is very top line, but it forces you to think through the process because here's the thing, we set this big vision. What we often don't do is put all these tactical pieces in place. We don't get into the minutia because the minutia is the hard work, let's be honest. You know, it's not fun getting up at six in the morning and working out or five in the morning whenever the crazy woman does it. I get up and do it five, not quite with the same rigor, I'm not gonna lie. Um, so I'm a little afraid about joining Kim on this, I'm not gonna lie about that either. But um, when you get up and you do that, you know, it's ugly at first and you're like, oh my God, what exactly am I doing? And it gets better and better over time. So you need to put those steps in place. It's great to say I want to be fit, but I've now got to say this, this is what I'm, this is why I'm doing it. This is how I'm going to do it. These are the tools I need to do it. So you need to literally list all of that out. To have a fit person on your vision board is not going to get you there. It's going to help get you there, but it's not going to get you all the way. So I have found that this has actually been a fundamental part of the exercise because this is the part where you truly do drill down 
and make sure that you are going to stick to it because this is where the work is. And people who actually do this part deliver and make it happen. So one thing does definitely lead to the other. You know, I, I'm going to throw this up and this is live like your life depends on it because of course it really does. And it, and it does, you know, we have these goals and we, we want to deliver on these visions that we have in front of us. And we can't, we can't put that on anybody else's shoulders. It's our life. And so I think in that process, we have to take the ownership. We have to make the vow and make the commitment and do it and make it happen. So put those excuses aside and let them go. I think the next thing that I would strongly suggest for everyone, because you know your life does depend on it, is figure out what for you are going to be the key factors for your success. So you've identified what your goals are, you've identified the excuse list and the, the limiting factors and put them to the side. You've now said that you know this is what I need to do is there anything incremental? Are there any incremental pieces in your day, in your week, in your life that you need holistically so that you ensure that all of those goals are continuously achieved? Because there's probably some common threads. There's probably legitimately, as you lay out these goals, they're going to require an allocation of time. They may require an allocation of support. They may require a coach. They may require, you know, that your children understand and that your children or your spouse or your siblings or your parents or whoever it is are aware that you are on this mission so that you get support from them. So it's important that you understand these and then it's important that you also in the same process identify the importance of accountability so that not only are you putting all those tools in place, but you have people who are just sort of checking in on you, not necessarily being a harp, but a friend to just help guide you along and encourage you and be a champion. We all kind of need champions. And I think that's what's so amazing about your team is how amazingly you champion each other and all of that energy. And everybody needs that. So that's a huge advantage that you guys have. Uh, you know, I, I put this up here. So I'm in the midst of actually uh, creating a, I'm going to say day timer, but that's actually a lie. I'm, I'm going to say it's a, a journal slash day timer slash way of managing all of these goals because you literally have to drill down from the 10 year. And then I say you've got to kind of drill down to the five and the three year. And then you've got to get really into the nitty gritty on year one and year two, you really do. So you've literally, and, and it's literally by month because it, that, you know, every, if we decide, and here's my example, if we decide today we're sitting here, it's February the 24th, 2020, and we decide we want to buy a home in five years. And that home is going to cost us in this crazy Canadian markets. And I live in Toronto. I don't know where all of you are. So if we want to buy a home in five years, we probably need $50 million, but we're not going to go that big. So uh, I don't know what the housing market is going to be like then, but let's say we want to buy something and it's going to cost us a million dollars for the sake of argument. You know, we actually have to start putting the plans in place now. We can't assume that year four and three quarters, we've now got everything. We know where we want to live. We've got the money in the bank and we're good to go. We need to put those stepping stones in place now. So that's the purpose of drilling down and having the series of steps that we must constantly be looking at to ensure that we deliver so that by the time we get to the five years, it's like, yeah, I'm here. And that's why, you know, I said to you guys earlier, when you actually do this, you achieve the goals sooner because you start to actually see, oh my God, like I'm checking this off my list this week. And so I'm actually ahead of where I should be for the month and I'm ahead of where I should be for the quarter and for the year. By forcing yourself to put that discipline in place, it actually causes all of your priorities to come to the surface and you start to get very good at seeing what the, the time wasters are and getting rid of them and the things that truly do put you and continuously move you in the direction of your dreams and put you ahead every single day, you put more and more energy on those. And that actually becomes very fulfilling and inspiring and motivating and actually does make you a happier person because you're actually now getting closer and closer to everything that you want and you're accomplishing. And it's when we accomplish things that our pride in ourselves and our confidence in ourselves continues to rise. 
So, you know, how do you actually get down to the nitty gritty of doing this? So I'll, I'll tell you a few things that I do, and I'm very ritualistic with this, and my children can attest to this, but I am up every day at five o'clock, and I, can, I actually have this so ingrained that I can do this now without even having an alarm clock. And when I first get up, so I, and, I, and you know what, I'm going to take a step back. I actually, my day starts the night before. So I actually heard Kim say this and I thought this was so funny because I'm exactly the same. So I kind of set my night table up uh, the night before so that when I wake up, I'm good to go right at five o'clock. So I have my water with my lemon already in there. Um, I am a lunatic with high blood pressure. So I have my meds sitting there. This is the joys of being 54, everybody. Um, and being a maniacal mom. Um, and I, so I have my journal sitting there, I have my phone and I have my laptop. So the, they're sitting off to the side, but needless to say, they're within reach. So I get up, I drink my lemon juice and, or my lemon water, and then I legitimately, I meditate for 10 minutes. And so you have to find whatever works for you. The reason that I specifically do that is because it centers me and it grounds me and it allows me to give myself a moment of reflection as I head into my day. And as I shared with you, as soon as I wake up, I can actually see my vision boards. So this, if, if I don't take this 10 minutes at this point in time, I have to be honest, I'm gonna lose it. And I know that, I know I will lose it in my day. That time will never be come back to me. So that's why I feel so important to take it at that time to actually center and ground myself. Uh, I then do, uh, a workout that is anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes long. So as I shared with all of you, I joined your team Beachbody uh, yesterday. So I'm looking at the rigor in your exercises, which are a little bit more aggressive than the ones I've been doing, but maybe my results will be better. Um, so, uh, I then legitimately work out for anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. And now maybe with Kim 30 minutes and then I hop in the shower. I come back out and I actually now organize my day. So I literally sit down and I take a look at my priorities for the day. I usually kick out some key emails uh, so that I feel like I've got everything under control in my head. And then I head into my day. So that's legitimately what I do every single morning. On Sundays, I do a regroup. So I take a look at the week that's just been behind me and I take a week at, a look at not only the week ahead, but the four weeks ahead. So I'm constantly obviously moving that four week, that set of pillars ahead. And what I have found is that it allows me to make adjustments. So I could see there could be new meetings that are being required, new deadlines from clients, because as I shared with all of you, I run an agency. And so there's new priorities that come into the fold. So I make those adjustments and I do all of that on Sunday mornings so that I can be sure that I stay on track with my goals and priorities. Because, well, on the one hand, I have to earn an income. On the other hand, I have these vision boards that I want to make sure that I achieve and are ultimately the reason that I get out of bed every day. And so the two have to come together. And so I find that Sunday morning is very, very important to me. And if I don't do it, I'm actually, I go into the week a little chaotic. Uh, and then obviously when I'm coming up to you know, a key month or a key quarter, I do that same kind of review. So obviously, you know, this is the end of February. So even though on Sunday, I will have done a review four weeks out, I also will take a look at, okay, what, what were the goals that I had set for myself on February and how am I achieving them? What did I set for March, April, May, June, and how are they looking and do I need to make those adjustments? So I'm constantly sort of having that iteration. And I guess my point to all of you is once you put that in place, it's so easy to just see those bullets. And I literally have them as bullets that I handwrite in the corner of my calendar so that I'm just constantly, first of all, visually they're there and they're a constant reminder, but then they're also allowing me to make adjustments as life adjusts. So I'm being fully transparent here. This is truly how I manage my days, weeks, months, years, life. Um, I thought I would put in here for you guys actually this morning routine so that you actually had it so that um, a, a lot of people ask me, what do I actually do? So this is what I honestly do. Uh, I do take time when I hop out of the shower to write in my journal. So I love to write. Uh, so I am a, uh, I'm a blogger and, uh, but I write so that I can come to terms with life and the, and the world. So um, I write all these crazy things. 
Um, and so that's something that just makes me happy. Um, I put in here my morning mantra. So I have, and, and I will tell you very transparently, it sometimes shifts. This is the one that I'm hooked on at the moment. Um, but I do what are called runes, which um, are like special stones with engravings on them. I'll explain them that way, or crystals. And uh, what they do is they allow me to, uh, I pick a different one every day just by putting my hand in the bag and I let the universe decide what I'm going to get. And it allows me to heighten my awareness in a particular area that allows for growth. So it's very similar to you picking one of your cards. So that's something that Kim does every single day. Very, very similar. So I do that. I say my mantra. I ground myself so that as I head into my day, I'm reminded of where I started an hour earlier when I was doing my meditation. So I try to do that at different points throughout the day so that I constantly come back to that state of grace and remembering to stay on track because as we all know, you so easily get off track. Uh, I put in here my evening routines. Uh, I would say my evening routines, it's funny, your night definitely sets up your day. And so um, although I definitely take a pause at the end of the day and I obviously just want to hop into bed and fall asleep. I do take the time to make sure I set myself up for the next morning. And if I'm going to work out, I actually, um, so I'm single, so I can do this. I can sometimes go to bed in my workout gear if I have somewhere to go early the next morning. So then I'm legitimately that easy and that ready to go. And I've done that many times, not gonna lie. Um, but I also can have it like literally ready at the end of my bed. So I don't grunt and groan so much. Gratitude is a big thing for me, and uh, I've read a lot on gratitude, and if you go to bed with a grateful mind, it actually sets you up for a great sleep. Interestingly enough, when you do daily gratitude, um, there's been a lot of conversations, should you do three, should you do five, should you do ten, and uh, the practice right now that is often being discussed is if you focus on your top three, five, if that's what makes you happy, but it's really to focus on the ones that are abnormal in your daily routine. So of course we're grateful for our health and our wellness and our loved ones. That goes without saying, so I'm not in any way diminishing that. But it's also to be grateful for, you know, today as an example, we had, uh, I had a client actually pull me aside and comment on, I had brought someone to a meeting and they said, I need to tell you, this person was a huge add to the meeting, didn't expect they were going to be so great. For me, I was very grateful that they pulled me aside and said that, and then they actually sent an individual note to that person. So that is something for me that is abnormal in my day that I will hold as a moment of gratitude. Another moment is, you know, we, we took, um, uh, one of the girls at work brought the dog, her dog to the park or brought her dog to work. And we all went for a five minute walk to the dog park, very inconsequential, but it ended up being absolutely hysterical as this dog was going mad. And we all had a chance to just sort of laugh and take a break in the day. And yet this is nothing, but it's, but it is something. And I think that's, it's those little things that cause us to realize how amazing our lives are. And I think sometimes we forget about those and we diminish them. And so it's important that we think about those. So a lot of the popular conversation and learnings on gratitude is to actually think about those things that we often uh, don't notice because in noticing the small things, it makes the bigger things equal makes us even more grateful for the bigger things. So, and just makes us more aware and much more mindful. Uh, and then obviously before I go to sleep, I take one last look at my vision board and I kind of do a little blessing for myself and wish myself a good night's sleep. I do a little blessing for my loved ones and I hopefully get a good night's sleep. Depends on the evening, let's be honest. And then I do do a little bit of a nighttime mantra and um, I do find that, so I'm going to say it's a little bit of a prayer. Um, so it's my way of just sort of closing off the day and giving myself some peace and then going to sleep. And it also forces me, you know, I, I admit I do have my electronics near my bed. And I know there's a lot of research that says you shouldn't do that. and They should be in another room, etc. cetera. Um, I think it's because I'm this neurotic single mom. I like to have everything within reach. But that said, I do at least put them off to the side and I find that this causes me to have that closure and that separation from my technology and my life and forces me just to now 
take that breath and close my eyes and go to sleep. So I share that with you and you're welcome to obviously, you know, follow your own practice. Um, that sort of brings me to the end. I put in here, um, I, I do these live workshops that literally take everybody from the start to the finish of this entire process. Today we focused on goals because I, I do think honestly, you know, having a vision is amazing and we all have them and it's so inspiring to look at our vision boards but honestly, you got to nail it and you've got to list it out and define what you really want. And then you literally have to build the daily map in order to achieve it. And we're all going to have a million excuses. I have a million excuses. I got to be honest. I can think of a million reasons why I am not going to want to work out with Kim tomorrow morning. Um, but I can also think of lots of reasons why I need to get my ass out of bed and do it and that I will be very thankful. And it's those, you know, it's those first few minutes when we all kind of go, oh my gosh, this is awful. And change, everyone says this, it's kind of, you know, when you first start to put something new in place, you kind of go, oh my God, this is gonna be awesome. It's like that honeymoon period. And the honeymoon period lasts for about a week. And then it gets into the kind of ugly period where you're now in it and you're like, oh my God, this is absolutely painful. And are you seeing results? Well, maybe, but maybe not the results you want. But it's not until you are literally three or four weeks in that now physiologically, any habit that you're doing starts to actually become ingrained with you. So I'm not just talking about a workout here. You could be committing to a practice of drinking the uh, water with the lemons in it. You could be committing to a practice of actually meditating. It doesn't matter what that practice is but it's around week three or week four where it starts to become so ingrained with you that it just becomes natural habit. And in that process, you just fall into the pattern and your productivity and your confidence and everything just rises. So on that note, I will leave that with you. You are all welcome to join me at any particular point in time. I've shared with you, I do do these workshops. Uh, I've now started doing them publicly uh, as a result of so many of my students and uh, some, so many of my clients asking me to do them for family members, so non-business related members. And so we're starting to do them and I'm trying to do them once every couple of months. So I publish them on Instagram when I'm going to be doing them. I actually have one coming up uh, this Saturday because it's a bonus day this year. Not only is it a leap year, but it actually falls on a Saturday. So I've been saying to everybody, take that extra day and invest it in yourself. And then in the upcoming weeks, I will be hosting a webinar because I do have a lot of people that have been saying to me that they're remote. And so I will be publishing that on my Instagram as well. I think Instagram is probably the best way to find me and or my website. So one or the other. So you're welcome to reach out at any time. Um, so I, that kind of closes it off for me. I'm going to, Kim, I don't know if anybody has any questions. I am happy to answer questions on anything. So please ask away. That was so incredible. First of all, I just wanted to say thank you for pouring into us. And I wanted to piggyback on what Nicole was saying about the webinar. And I think Nicole and I are trying to drill down how can we make a webinar available to Crush Nation that you guys can plug into and be able to have Nicole do a bit of more intensive teaching on goal setting and vision and all of those things. So stay tuned. We will keep you posted because we're on it. Um, and I think it'll be really powerful to have your expertise, Nicole. And let that just be an optional, an optional spa spot for you guys to level up your training. We always encourage personal development. We encourage going and finding personal, um, personal, uh, what's sorry, uh, professional development groups to join, or you know, business, little business meetings uh, in your town. You know, where you're actually getting to know different people. And I think sometimes, and the beautiful part about Beachbody is we have amazing trainers, we have amazing coaches, we have all these people, and they share all these things. But when you actually get outside of our network and you're also learning from other people that have expertise and as a business strategist, I really see, I grow a lot when I'm, I really love what you said. There was something you said at the beginning. You said you will only, uh, you, uh, you respond back to the level of which you're trained and that's true. So wherever you're, you, you act in yeah. whatever the level it is, you're trained. So for us to be able to offer something from Nicole in a workshop that you guys can plug into, 
I'm really excited about that because I think it'll be valuable that maybe you won't be able to afford that Robin Sharma, that Tony Robbins, that Rachel Hollis this year, but you can afford this work workshop with Nicole that's going to be in your home. And, you know, so that's the thing that we can really talk about. And I want to make sure that you guys have offered. So we'll stay tuned. We will have some um, more information on that. But if anyone has any questions for Nicole right now, I would love to just open it up. Ask away. Okay, Danielle has a question on, I think I'll just, there we go. All right, uh, Danielle has a question about the, on the fears and distractions page. Yeah. What are some good examples of methods to manage some top fears? So it's a very, very good question. So it's interesting. I actually just gave a presentation a week ago on being fearless, and it was actually about fearing less as opposed to being fearless. You know, we all kind of think of fearless this way, but it was about being fearless. And the interesting thing about fear is that these are things that like we're afraid about of something often that hasn't happened. And so it kind of begs the question, why are we afraid of something that hasn't yet happened? So there's, there's two sides to this. One is there's a history that has made us nervous. So that's, that's the key piece. And what, in order to come to that first, so let's deal with that first. In order to deal with our history, you actually have to go through the ritual of serving it up, identifying it. So identifying what those hurts are and those pains are that are causing you this anxiety because they are limiting factors in fairness that you need to deal with. And so you, in or, the best way to deal with them is actually to go through a ritual. So you need to actually write out what that fear is, what the cause of that fear is. And honestly, you have to come to terms with it that it is no longer, by writing about it and coming to terms with it, you force yourself to actually lay it all out, tears and all, and then you need to go through whatever ritual serves you. So I do one of two things. I either, I often will take it and write it on a piece of paper and then I scrunch it up and I burn it and then I scatter the ashes. So, you know, that sounds actually kind of crazy, but the truth is you need a ritual in order to remind yourself that you've dealt with it. Otherwise you're just kind of, Honestly, you're just placating it and you're just putting it somewhere off to the side and you haven't dealt with it. And so it's going to rise up again. I'm not going to tell you that by doing what I just did, I have dealt, I have like, it's gone forever. But what it reminds me is, hey, you dealt with that. So why are you letting it reoccur? So it forces you to kind of put that stake in the ground and say, okay, move on, let it go. So that's the first thing. So that's when something from the past continues to aggravate at you. Now, I'm also going to say there are times when obviously you have to get incremental support and help for that. Um, but I do feel that at some point you need to put that stake in the ground and deal. As for ones that are in the future, you know, it's very interesting. Uh, a few years ago, I went to a, a place in Phoenix, Arizona, and I, there's a gentleman, uh, Wyatt, I can't think of his last name, but he is known as the horse whisperer. And his whole point was actually talking about, we fear the future. And he said, why are you fearing the future? It could be unfucking believable. And I was like, oh my God, you're so right. Like, why am I afraid? And so we're afraid of what might not happen. And in fact, what happens is then we manifest this. And so we hold ourselves back from being happy in the present and then actually looking forward to what could happen in the future. So I think there's a, just a little bit of that realization of what exactly am I afraid of? And, you know, there's, um, I think we live in an age where there is so much anxiety all the time. Let's just, let's just be honest. We're always worried. We're always neurotic. You know, we're judging ourselves against all these different parameters. And I think if you literally sit and again, you write out what exactly you're afraid of, and then you kind of go like, what are, what is the worst thing that could happen? And so that is something that I do do with myself as I'll look at a fear and I'll be like, well, I'm afraid of X, Y, Z. And it's like, well, what is the worst thing that could happen if I actually do that? Now, you know, there's certain things like bungee jumping, jumping out of an airplane and all this. So there's other repercussions for that. But in terms of actually taking a, a step forward to actually try something new or to do an initiative, the worst thing that potentially going to happen is that we're going to fail. And in the failing, we're going to learn. And I'm going to tell you, I'm the queen of failing. I've had some monumental, and I mean monumental, failures. And I'm still alive. And very thankfully, my children are all alive. I'm touching my wood desk as I say that. 
but you know, I've, I've learned a ton through those and I, I very honestly share the learning through those. And so I think, you know, it's in facing our fears that we are, we gain so much confidence in ourselves and we realize how amazing the world is. And then the more, the more you face them, the further you actually start to go, which is the most amazing part. I said the thing that, um, the quote that Kim reiterated was we fall to our highest level of training. When you face your fears, you actually increase your level of training because you're pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. And so I think that you're automatically raising your, your game and raising the bar for yourself every single time. So I hope that answered your question. That was a very long answer. Sorry. <laughs> Are there more questions on here? It's, it's like being scared by skydiving a hundred percent. Yeah. Every, we all have so much. So I'm going to tell you, I'm a massive scuba diver. I love scuba diving. I love swimming. And the first time I did it, I did it without my children. Cause I was like, well, God forbid if something happens, you know, at least this way, if everything goes sideways, I am going to be the one who dies and everything. And we are now advanced divers. And I'm going to tell you, honestly, I've done it with sharks. I kicked a shark in the head. Don't do that. Um, but now I, there's a whole world under there and it's magical. And I never would have experienced that, you know? So I think, and, and that's an easy one, you know, we, because it's inconsequential in fairness, that's a first world fear. But I think there's a lot of things that are like that, that we go and we experience it. And then we realize, oh my God, that was actually amazing. That's where you need a champion. That's where you need somebody to hold your hand and say, you can do this girl, you know, you're going to be okay. I love that first world fear. Yeah. Like we need to hashtag that shit, right? Yeah. It's like, you are so blessed that you're even in the opportunity to send a message and you're fearing that first world fear. Like you have first a business and yeah. you're not sent, like, for example, right? There's so many times people have said, Oh, I don't know. I'm afraid to be myself. What if I do that post? What if you don't like, what if you don't do that? So I love that. So good. All right. Does anyone have one more question before we wrap this up? It is nine o'clock, I think. Yeah. Nine one. So does anyone have any last questions before we wrap it up with Nicole? I just want to know, like, does the music come back on? Like, yeah. do you guys like no, dance no, party like, out of here? Yeah, that's the work. <laughs> I have a question. <laughs> oh, I love it. That was fantastic. Does that, I I, does, is someone going to say something? Yeah. Um, I was going to ask if Nicole is going to show up at the 6 a.m. Zoom crew tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're so mean. Who asked that question? That's but two. It's me. Oh, I can't, oh, so I can't see you. Oh, you're in darkness. God damn, because you're asking me. You know, I'm not one to back down from a dare or a challenge. <laughs> that means I have to be there in touch. That that be, yes. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. I can't believe I'm saying that. So I... I yeah, I don't even know if I have the equipment. God damn it. <laughs> you don't need, it's fine. You can just do something that doesn't require equipment. We'll tackle that in the morning. Just Perfect. Great. So glad I did this call now. See? And you definitely get a headband for sure. Um, okay, Nicole, you are incredible. And you're just, you know, what I love the most, guys, about Nicole is that I immediately felt connected to her. And I think if anything that you can take out of this call is that you are so, it is so important for you to be so uniquely yourself. And I think, Nicole, that's one thing I've noticed about you from the very beginning as we've been continued to get to know each other is that you are just raw and relatable and real and you are so dead set on being you. And it's a beautiful thing. So there are many nuggets that we pulled out of today. Guys, the templates are available on Nicole's website. She has put together this PowerPoint presentation, so I will post it in and her website um, in the notes of this recording. Um, but it's a really cool exercise to print these off and use these templates. I always say, use the tools. Don't be a tool. <laughs> like, don't be a tool. You have everything you need to be successful, but you don't fill out the vision part of your planner, or you don't map out your week. And or you don't do what Nicole is, has even gifted us with, with giving us a bigger vision past 2020, past 2021. Like, you know, so those are the things that I really encourage you to think about because I, it's really, really important. So Nicole, thank you for your time. 
You thank, are honestly, great. thank you, all of you. I'm very honored to have spent my last hour with all of you. I'm going to regret it tomorrow morning at six o'clock. I know. So I'm just How are you going to go to sleep? I, I am just yeah, kidding. You're so fired up right now. You're not going to be able to go to sleep. <laughs> but honestly, thank you all so, so much. I really, really appreciate it. And I look forward to yeah. reconnecting. And please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions or anything. Yeah. I am literally a text away. Amazing. Always. And I'm going to send you a 6 a.m. Zoom crew link. So you have to be there. We'll okay, see. perfect. All right. Nobody's allowed okay, to laugh right. at me. No, we won't. No, no, we won't. I'll be dressed. No house coats. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for joining in. Have an amazing day, guys. We have like five days left in February. We are in month team cup. So please make sure you are showing up in your business and in your vision and in your purpose and where you want to go and the impact you want to make. Um, cause it's never too late. So let's get this done. And I'm super proud of us. Fresh nation. Let's finish this month strong and we'll see you in March. I'm just kidding. I'll see you in the message pods in three minutes, but, <laughs> uh, let's go get this done. See you guys. Bye everybody. Bye,